Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Looking forward to being with you and sharing the Lord's Supper together. Think a little bit about culture. Our service begins on page 94. Stand when you are ready. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the people, to help your people, nurture, turning us from our sin, to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin. In the presence of God and of one another, let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, have Amen. mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you, and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of our life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved, and in the name of Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. <coughs> so this first hymn has five verses. We'll do four. We'll do four. Any particular four? Whichever ones. <laughs> as long as we do them all the same. <laughs>
turning again to our page 147. Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Defend us, gracious Lord.
today's psalm is Psalm 133, and I will read it responsibly by half dose. Have good and have pleasant it is. When kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the beard. Upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing, Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion. For there the, the Lord has commanded the blessing, blessing life forevermore. Jews. 
they locked all the doors in the house. Jesus entered, stood among them, and said, Peace to you. Then he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples, seeing the Master with their own eyes, were exuberant. Jesus repeated his greetings, Peace to you, just as the Father sent me, I send you. Then he took a deep breath and breathed into them. <coughs> Receive the Holy Spirit, he said. If you forgive someone's sins, they're gone for good. If you don't forgive sins, what are you going to do with them? But Thomas, sometimes called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with him when Jesus came. The others told him, we saw the master. But he said, unless I see the nail holes in his hands and put my finger in the nail holes and stick my hand in his side, I won't believe it. Eight days later, the disciples were again in the room. This time, Thomas was with them. Jesus came through the locked doors and stood among them. Peace to you, he said. Then he focused his attention on Thomas. Take your finger and examine my hands. Take your hand and stick it in my side. Don't be unbelieving. Believe. Thomas said, my master, my God. Jesus said, so if you believe because you've seen with your own eyes, even better blessings are in store for those who believe without seeing. Jesus provided far more God-revealing signs that are written down in this book. They're written down so you can believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and the act of God the Father. The Gospel of the Lord.
we're given the locker. And you get to choose what you want to put in there and what you want to take out. I really like the passage today because there's so many things in there that I can play with. So I asked Jesus the question, what does it mean when you say the sins I forgive will be forgiven and the sins I retain will be retained? That's the, another version of that. I like what he says here. It's that you receive, uh, they're gone for good, but if you don't forgive them, what are you going to do with them? Well, cool. the disciples are all gathered in the room together later in the day of the resurrection when they first saw Jesus. I think that's kind of cool because everyone was afraid, but they found safety in each other. <clears throat> so they all gathered together in the same place at the same time because they're not afraid of each other. And in the midst of that, Jesus comes to them. Wow. <clears throat> something to think about, an image in my mind. But I want to go back to this question I had for Jesus. So what does it mean about retaining sins and releasing sins? I think I come across that the most when I deal with couples. Um, if there has been something that's happened, a trauma that's happened, or an affair that's gone on, uh, someone has lost the family money, or something along that way, uh, the sin is out there for the family to deal with. How does the family deal with it? Well, the first thing we want to do is to make sure it doesn't happen again. So we store a little memory of it in our life. I want to make sure that when I see this, I'm not going to be wounded anymore. So let's set up a way so that you're no longer at risk to us. That's fine, and that's good. That's actually one of the ways in which we have a defense mechanism that allows us to sort of be safe and be safe with each other. But what happens when it starts to rock? When resentment starts to rot and off gases, it seems to affect the family because I want to be safe, therefore I'm going to be angry with you for a long time. We sort of have the idea that we have to keep our pain if we want to keep the lesson. And that becomes a problem. People hold grudges. And then when they hold grudges, they don't necessarily know what to do with it because they've now put something in their locker to which their life needs to be always keeping in touch with. So I didn't trust you. I trusted you and you don't tr and you betrayed my trust. Can I trust you today? Well, what about today? Well, what about today? Well, what about today? And so I have to constantly go back and measure myself up against this experience. Am I safe today? Well, what happens if this happens? Am I safe then? And you can see my constant referral to that grudge means that I'm actually using it. So the answer that Jesus has, the question is, so if you want to forgive their sins, they'll be forgiven. If you want to keep them, go ahead. You keep their stinky socks in your locker. You let that smell permeate where you are. And if you do that, you'll constantly be angry and bitter. Something to think about. Because when I see couples, I would say about 80% of if the resentment is at, at 8 out of 10, the couple won't make it. Because the person with the resentment is now married to the resentment. And the partner is on the outside. So there's no real opportunity to heal it. One of those weird kind of things that happens to us. You want to keep someone's smelly socks in your locker, go for it, Jesus says. But understand you're going to pay a price for that. One of the cool things that I've never noticed before 
is that in this passage, Jesus says you have the power to forgive sin. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Wait a minute. Six months ago, Jesus, they were ready to stone you when you said sins could be forgiven. Because only God can forgive sins. Remember that? Yep. And now you're telling us that we too have the power to forgive sins. So we now have the experience God wants us to have in what it means to liberate people. We have now the power that God has shared with us to set people free. Well, how do we do that and still stay safe? That's the question of where grace is for us. How do we set ourselves straight? We can't do it without the very grace of Jesus. So to balance that out means we have to stay closer <laughs> to say, well, Lord, can I trust you for me to be safe? Sounds great, but you don't know what a slob this person is. How do I live every day with this when I'm constantly in danger from him? And I could develop a civil war saying I should forgive them, but I just can't feel safe enough to do so. That's the power of what the scripture verse is talking about today. What do we do with that? And Jesus said, do whatever you like. If you want to know what forgiveness and grace is about, then enter that pathway. If you'd like to keep your stinky socks in your locker, then do so. There's another question that we also have about our locker. As I move towards my senior <laughs> years, I'm also wondering questions that I've never asked before. Dad, how much of your depression do I actually carry with me? And how much fear of your anger really still influences me? I live in a little space, Kemple, which is nice. I serve in the fire department in Hensbrook, which I'm glad I don't live in Hensbrook, in some senses. Over the years of being in Hensbrook, it's been a wonderful experience, but Hansport is hated by Hans Porter. Absolutely hated. Uh, but Lockhartville hates Hans Porter. And Avonport hates Lockhartville. So if you're not from there, to be really clear, where you're from means you're now committing yourself to political stuff. Well, where does that come from? Well, it comes from the culture that we grew up in our family values that are passed on to us. And sometimes they're formed out of resentments that my parents might have had towards something. Am I carrying my dad's sin in my locker? Have I committed my own sins because of the assumptions that my dad made and passed on to me that I didn't question? Whose shit is this anyway becomes the question. And can grace help me to be able to focus in on it and find forgiveness? Sometimes it's me that needs to be forgiven. How do I view my own sin? Do I forgive myself or do I accept forgiveness? How do I deal with stuff that's happened to me that I don't know anything about? One of the things I'm doing each night as I tuck myself into bed, I have this Net, I think it might be a Netflix video that I'm watching called The Sixties. And it's really uh, a, it's a thematic approach, so each week they're looking at a different theme. But I lived through that. Of course, I was too young to go to Woodstock, so my parents wouldn't let me go out if the street lights were on, so I needed to stay home. I didn't really know where Woodstock was anyway. I thought it was a town in southern Ontario, and I, I'm glad to hear that I didn't go because I would have been lost. <laughs> so growing up in the 60s, I, I'm watching this because I didn't realize how much influence the civil rights movement had. The assassinations of the 
of Bobby Kennedy and John Kennedy, uh, they had an effect on my culture. The music that came through the 60s had an effect on who I am and how I find my expression. I didn't even know that. Because I grew up with it, it was just like feeding, eating another meal. But the question is, oh, how much is really you? How much is really where the grace of God needs to touch you and you need to be liberated? Because I grew up in the 60s, I had a different view than my millennial co-workers. Because I grew up in the 60s, I had a different view than Gen X and Gen Z. So how much does that need to be set aside for me to have a workplace that's peaceful and respectful? These are questions that Jesus asks us today, and I like the way the message puts that. The sins you forgive will be forgiven. It's your job now. The sins you want to keep, what are you going to do with them? Let us pray. There are times when we feel quite self-righteous about pointing out someone else's sin. We show how inadequate they are. It makes us feel good in some ways. When people hurt us, Lord, we want to be safe. And so we keep a relic of that experience. And sometimes that relic, depending on how much we let it shape us, turns to bitterness and anger. As we sing and pray, as we lead in communion, we recognize that there are times when you have brought us through the bitterness, and you've done so with grace. So Lord, because it doesn't come natural to us, but rather the new creature in Christ is not really a natural spot for us. We have to be trained on how to apply grace to our everyday life. And so we invite you, Grace, into this part of our life, and we ask that you would help us find clarity, find forgiveness, find that sense of where Jesus Christ's grace is in us, where we need it for ourselves to forgive ourselves, where we needed to forgive those things that were assumptions to us or just common experiences that still influence us. Help us by your grace to step up. Help us to wake up and show up. Help us to grow up. <coughs> we pray these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's sing again.
Let us join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 105, and let us profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come and judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the church, for all those. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before you, Lord, who promises to hear us in answer and steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth so that with one heart we testify to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. To proclaim the blessings of life forevermore, like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Lord, in your mercy. You direct the nations, O oh God, especially those, I think there are 40 countries this year that are having elections. Guide all in authority that they may shepherd their peoples in the ways of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them in the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Your, your place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing and safety. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others. We think of those particularly in our community that we'd like to have in our mind's eye and present their name to you, O oh God. Pray for Carrie and Peter, Adam and Tracy, Foster and Derek, Lord. and Mark and Misty. Lord, in your mercy, you give us fellowship with one another in this faith community here in New Bern. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we may live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. Lord, in your mercy, you share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O gracious God, we pray, knowing that you are gone before us and that you are one who holds us dear. Hear all of the prayers that we have committed to you, trusting in your mercy and your grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God Christ be with you always. And also with you. Just like Jesus did, saying peace to everybody, let's say peace to everybody. Or hug them if you want. <laughs>
Let us pray. God of all creation, all that you made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we may be for you and the world, signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We will to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea, and all their creatures, and the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy.
Thanks be to God.
go before you to show you the way. May he walk beside you to go with you, behind you to protect you, above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he walk beside you to go with you. Behind you to protect you, above you to watch over. 